you guys for joining. Uh, I know it is uh, afternoon and it is hard to uh, be attentive, but you know I hope to kind of make it interactive so that you guys can you guys can ask me any questions anytime and then stop me anytime. So uh, my topic today is uh, you know leveraging Intel's processor based capabilities to uh, in AWS for security and uh, as we go through this uh, presentation you would see uh, where Intel actually plays in this area you know security is mostly uh, believed to be a software only play but you know there is a, there are a lot of things uh, under the covers that you know um, Intel can can contribute to so i am mohan poteri i have more than 30 years experience in the industry i'm a cissp i uh, i focus on uh, cloud solutions architecture uh, I work on, in Intel for Team Amazon, so my customer is Amazon, and um, my goal is to make Intel products work well in Amazon. So, um, so that's kind of uh, where I come from. So, so now you know if you look at it, you know, as all of you know, cloud offers a lot of uh, opportunities for business innovation, right? You know, you can um, br bring new products uh, to fruition quickly. There's a lot of agility that cloud offers. Uh, that uh, you know that uh, you know uh, traditional on premises environments don't offer you you could you could deploy things in the edge uh, grow your infrastructure across the globe you know all these uh, all these capabilities are available in the cloud but there's always a but so what what is that right is that you know if you look at it innovation can be hindered by security right uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of potential uh, trouble brewing with uh, attackers and malware. We have insider threats. We have uh, uh, there's an issue of trusting the cloud provider itself at times. There's a lot of regulatory requirements on things running in certain geographies. You know, leaving certain areas and stuff like that. There's IP protection. So all these areas are area of concern. When you actually move to the cloud, even even though some, a lot of the tools available in cloud is actually some a lot of times better than on premises, but there is a perception that you know uh, there is a perception that cloud can be insecure. So, so that's kind of where uh, you know I want to talk about and um, see bring in bring bring forth the topic where you know how can Intel? Why is Intel important? And how can Intel help you? move to the cloud in a secure manner, data privacy and all those concerns addressed, right? And so that's kind of where this, uh, this uh, discussion is all about, right? So, so if you look at, uh, you know, traditionally if you look at it, right, uh, security standpoint, you have these applications up there, uh, you have containers, guest OS, uh, OS and then firmware and hardware. And you would wonder why is Intel relevant here? Intel is down here in most cases. but you know what, what happens is all these can be potentially compromised at different layers. You can compromise the application. You can compromise containers. Guest OS has of their own vulnerabilities. You have uh, hypervisors themselves have vulnerabilities. My previous job I was with VMware, where a hypervisor was our job, right? And then VMware had a recently had a lot of uh, vulnerabilities associated with it. So, so and then the firmware level too, there could be hacks, there could be problems, right? So we believe that. Uh, you know, uh, this is the layer that you need to first think about. You know, if you have a, a, have a vendor, a processor vendor, that uh, allows you to add security so that all these layers can potentially be protected, that's kind of where Intel, Intel comes in. And that's kind of why this talk is relevant. So now, if you look at Intel, right, we have, uh, multi we look at it in multiple areas, right? We have the workload layer, well, when it comes to security, there's a lot of need for um, encryption and compression and other things. So we look at it from a workload protection at a workload level. How can we protect uh, the workload from hacks and attacks? From a from a encryption perspective, a lot of requirements are there. How do we protect from uh, pro for protect the data? And then there's also like. How can I make sure that the software I have put in is the one that's actually running and not something else that's hacked? So, so and, and then last but not the least, 
we ourselves right want to make sure that our product is not compromised so we need to make sure that we have a secure development process secure um, secure processes and uh, um, community interaction so that we are constantly aware of all the things that are happening and making sure that we address all the issues that uh, our customers f f face right and so that's kind of where um, you know intel comes in here and then we look at it in four different areas and so if you look at workload protection so you, if you, in most cases uh, you guys are familiar that you know a lot of times there is a protection for data at rest so you encrypt the data store it uh, stored and then you have protection of data in transit you are encrypting the data in transit but this is the last mile this has not been addressed these areas have been addressed for the many past years quite a bit but how about data and use is the mem is the is can somebody hack a server uh, that's running and access the data in transit in in in, uh, in use at the time in transit and trust has already been taken care of so that's where we have the concept of confidential computing we want to make sure that nobody can nobody no unauthorized person can access the data that is actually in use and and you and and ha cause data privacy issues that way so that's the problem with sensitive data and so that's kind of the evolving area in security if you think about it is confidential computing where uh, you are able to protect all levels and here also even you can be pretty sure whatever the environment you are running in the data doesn't leak so if you look at confidential computing this is how it works okay so if you look at it there is a trusted execution environment so intel helps you with all its tools to kind of create this trusted execution environment so the execution environment even uh, is beyond the hypervisor of the cloud provider it's uh, it's something that it's it's like a enclave you there's an enclave that exists and what happens is the data gets un unencrypted in this environment and once the data is processed and has to go out it's all encrypted so even the cloud provider right the cloud system administrator or any kind of other provider even if this a the the outside area is hacked there is no data leakage because the ink, uh, only in this trusted environment the data is actually exposed the application sees the, even the application itself is uh, is kind of authenticated it makes sure that the application is uh, is validated for the, only if the application is validated it can run here and once it's and, and, the, and then it can access the data and the data is unencrypted only in this trusted environment so that's kind of how uh, this is how a confidential computing environment works where uh, you know the data coming in is encrypted and the data leaving is encrypted the data in the middle is uh, running in a trusted environment that cannot be compromised even by cloud administrators you know i used to be a sysadmin for almost 20 years i could access all the data i can but this kind of an environment uh, what i see as a system administrator is always encrypted because the trusted environment is 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 a black box where i cannot get into any questions so if you look at where confidential computing is uh, is kind of relevant there are so many areas right healthcare as you guys know have a lot of uh, hipaa regulations and other regulations where you know confidentiality is crucial right and uh, healthcare is also distributed in many ways right there is there are uh, branch offices there are hospitals uh, centralized hospitals and and all these edge locations so you want to make sure that wherever your data is running the confidentiality me uh, mechanisms are in place so what happens is intel has a lot of customers across all these different verticals you know for healthcare financial services government a lot of a lot of financial vendors edge and field deployment so what we have learned with this is that we provide at a hardware level we provide you a capability where the actual trusted environment is is uh, is at the hardware level so that you can even if the software is hacked 
you you are you can try you can trust that whatever is running is actually trust is is trusted and not really hacked. So that's kind of what this brings, right? And uh, and then a lot of times uh, the difference in depth, right, gives you a requirement that everything every layer you are protected, and that's kind of what Intel can provide you. And with our with all our um, all our experience with all these different domains, we have learned from it, and we provide a solution that kind of encapsulate all of this. So, crypto perspective, right? From you know, Intel provides a lot of capabilities. Uh, we have our uh, um, crypto acceleration. There are there are like a quick access technology. There is a there is a, uh, other technologies where we are actually leveraging our processes, idle cycles to kind of uh, accelerate uh, encryption. So uh, for data in transit, uh, data storage, all these capabilities. So the crypto acceleration provides you all those capabilities. So at the, at the workload layer, you have these kinds of technologies that come from the processor that helps you accelerate some of the security processes that need to happen to have a secure environment. Right? And so this, one, th this shows you, right? This is a gen over gen com comparison. So this, uh, Intel's got, uh, right now Intel's running, is, is kind of shipping its fourth generation Xeon. This is for the third generation Xeon. Uh, the white, white, white line represents the second generation. So you can see for every generation, there is a lot of acceleration for all the common things that security and security uses, right? Like thing, all, all the open SSL, all the VPN technologies, all the all the encryption requirements uh, kind of are accelerated by Intel hardware. So it's uh, it's so let's say in AWS you're you're running on Intel instance, these capabilities are available so that you can leverage them and uh, and be secure without compromising performance of your application. Right. So that's then so here you see that you know. It, we, let's get to the crux of, crux of how hardware can help mitigate the software attack, right? So if you look at application and OSS, they are the, if you think about it, they are the, that attack surface is huge. So if you look at an application, it is, uh, you're, you're exposing your application to the world, right? And so there are a lot of ex exploits that come in day in and day out, and it's hard for us to keep up with it, right? And so... Uh, and then there are a lot of software vulnerabilities that uh, when humans uh, develop software, there are going to be vulnerabilities. There are going to be bugs out there. And so what happens is it's, it's impossible to develop software with no bugs, right? And so you have these kinds of um, uh, vulnerabilities out there, right? And then in addition, there have been even people who kind of, let's say you have a lot of security software that kind of helps you protect against all of these. There are, there are additional layers like the BIOS and the platform firmware where there are bugs as well. They are also hardware-related software that you know sometimes uh, the vendors keep up to date, sometimes they don't, and then there are bugs with these as well. So the attacks can happen at any of these layers. And the only layer that actually is very hard to break is the hardware layer. So if you can kind of use this hardware layer to kind of protect these other three layers, you are reducing your attack surface, and also your, you can have a trusted environment where you can say, you know what, anywhere I can run my application, and I can be sure that uh, even if the environment around it is very malicious, my applications are still, will still run in a trusted environment. So if you look here, so that's kind of where Intel, uh, Intel ha has all these different uh, capabilities. So we have the, what we call as the boot guard. The boot guard is actually tied to the hardware. So when, when, uh, when a particular uh, OS boots or an uh, OS boots to run a particular application, it looks at the boot block of the BIOS and makes sure that the BIOS is trusted. There's nothing else. It, it, it knows what a trusted BIOS looks like. Any, any alteration to the BIOS, which is the lowest level I showed in the last slide, any uh, modification of the BIOS is going to start uh, it, it'll trigger something where the, the boot guard will not boot, right? And so there is a, we have a chain of trust. The chain of trust ends in the hardware. So the hackers can never get into the hardware. So the chain of trust cannot be altered for the bias. So now you, you can run only a trusted 
bias. And once you have that, you use that to build upon that. The next layer, the OS, will be tied to the bias. And then, uh, then you have a, the firmware also is tied to the bias, and which is all which tied to the hardware. So but when you have all these different layers kind of uh, tied to the hardware and the trust that the hardware brings in, there is a, what we call as a silicon root of trust. So with the silicon root of trust, none of uh, all these things that run one after the other eventually uh, can be trusted because uh, this will not start without uh, the trust. Uh, it passing the test in the hardware level and similarly everything that layers on top. And that way we create what we call as the known good state. So wherever your environment, you might be running in a very uh, insecure environment where your hardware, physical hardware might be exposed, but still the access, because it's a silicon root of trust, you, are, you can trust that whatever is running is, a, is, a, is kind of a trusted environment and a known good state. So that's kind of where hardware really plays, because you might be wondering uh, why Intel, why hardware, and this is kind of where technology is evolving. This is kind of the foundation for confidential computing. And so in addition, right, there are a lot of things that we can do. Like, you know, we can make sure that, um, you know, we can enforce that the software runs in certain guardrails. We can make sure that only certain trusted programs can access uh, uh, privileged memory, for example. We can help, uh, you know, guard against OS attacks. We can make sure that an application cannot access areas of memory that it's not allowed to. So all these, uh, you can see from the previous slide where the hardware was the uh, root of trust, you can see that all these different other areas as well uh, we can enforce so that the software runs in this trusted guardrail and then everything that you run, even in a, in a non-protected environment from a physical standpoint, you can trust that whatever is running is, is, is good and trustworthy. So last but not the least, I just want to talk about, you know, we at Intel uh, follow all these, uh, follow in you know, a very strong security practice because we are a foundation of a lot of the compute that goes on on premises and in the cloud. And so if trust is broken with Intel, uh, we would lose a lot of our customers and credibility. So we actually, our culture is very, very embedded in security. So we have very secure development practices. We have a very strong threat, di threat discovery and response. We actually pay hackers to come hack our environments and um, hack our hardware and software and make sure that we have uh, very secure products. And then we, we kind of look at all these different areas like workload protection, software reliability, and we make sure that uh, we have a good community involvement. So we believe in being open. When we, when we notice there is a bug or a critical vulnerability, we let our customers know. Uh, rather than having them tell us something is wrong, we want to be forthright so that customers can protect for it. And so that's kind of uh, how kind of the whole thing flows. And So like I said, we, are, we believe in transparency. We, we have 13 years of uh, what we call as the security response program. So we have the industry leaders in how we respond to security incidents and security uh, vulnerabilities. And uh, we kind of uh, uh, are ahead of the curve usually. Uh, by the time uh, our customers are uh, get to know there is a vulnerability. We are the ones telling them, and we are also fixing them in a very timely manner. So, like we offer an Intel bug bounty program, we we pay hackers we for pointing out any flaws in our software, and then we have these monthly security bulletins. So, if you look at it, you know the fact that we are an established hardware vendor that uh, that ha that has a lot to gain from uh, secure practices. We kind of make sure we follow all of these guidelines. And uh, from an AWS perspective, what are the things? Like not all the things that I mentioned necessarily are available in all AWS instances. There are certain capabilities available in certain instances, 
It uh, depends on what AWS wants from us. You know, Intel offers all that at a chip level, but um, from, a, from a perspective of AWS, these are kind of the common things that we, we, uh, that's available for all the customers, the full memory and encryption. So you can make sure that your memory is encrypted and nobody can really hack into a, a running workload. The, we can make sure that we can uh, use what we call as the AWS Nitro, which is the hypervisor. The, you can use the Nitro enclaves to make sure that your VM is secure. And then you can also have uh, application isolation that we talk about in, the, in this paper here, that kind of is a homomorphic en encryption where the application has got a very small attack surface. And uh, because of that, it's very protected. And it's very hard to kind of crack into this kind of a shell that we provide. And uh, to some extent, AW, uh, Intel has, ICX is the third generation Xeon, Ice Lake. And uh, there are all these different accelerators that we have that accelerate a lot of the things that, required, that is required by security. So, and you can see that uh, how much it accelerates from the previous generation. There's a lot of uh, speed up that, that Intel can provide that, that makes uh, the applications run faster. Even with security being a concern and security being deployed, the application doesn't slow down. So the, peop, uh, the users don't, don't see it. And finally, as I mentioned, the hardware is what, uh, what is the, the first thing you need to think about because uh, the hardware is the one area where it's very hard for hackers to get into unless they have really real physical access, which is very hard in cloud environments anyways. And then you can, uh, we, can, we can use this hardware as a foundation and then build on it and uh, layer up and protect all all the layers, all the way up to your workload. So that's kind of my presentation. Questions? So on the on the secure uh, or root of trust, silicon root of trust, um, how's the key management done for certificates in the, in the hardware? What's the what's the cycle for that? It's it's Intel and the OEM or the cloud provider. They the the, the cloud provider can have their own trust, uh, certificate authority that can that can manage the keys for it, that will be embedded, that can be uh, burnt into the hardware, or, uh, and, or, or it can be delegated to Intel. So that's kind of how we do it. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.